Welcome to Webmaster. In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to set up the ARPS ring in the web management. We use two devices to set up a simple ring environment. For the first switch, the IP address is 10.2 and the node role is RPL owner. Then port 1 is the normal port and port 2 is the blocking port. And in the second switch, we set 10.4 for the IP address and the node role is ring node. Where port 1 is ring node port 0 that connected to port 2 from the first switch and port 2 is ring port 1 that connected to port 1 from the first switch. All of the ports are on the same VLAN, VLAN 1. In the beginning, we have to set up the ERPS function one by one for each switch. And remember, don't connect any cable first to prevent looping. Let's go to the web management from the first switch. Go to redundancy section, then click ERPS setting. In this page, you can configure the ERPS ring configuration. The first section is at ERPS instance, a section for mapping the VLAN to instance. The instance here is a logical ring that running over a physical ring and composed of a set of VLANs. Assign 0 as the instance ID and type 1 as the VLAN group ID. Then click add button and it will directly display in the ERPS instance setting section. The next section is Add ERPS Ring, a section to add the ring ID of the protection group. The maximum numbers of this ring ID is 32. Choose the ID, then click Add button. After that, a new line will be created in the ERPS Ring Settings section. In this section, you can start configuring the ring. We will change the node role and the rest we just use the default setting. For the first switch, the node role will be RPL owner. And set the status to enable. Then click submit. See the ring LED status here is still orange or abnormal status because the cable has not connected yet. The other things we also need to set up the ERPS timer setting for the guard timer when the ring failure happened and the recovery time. Let's just use the default setting. Now let's go to the second switch web management and go to ERPS setting. Actually, the basic setting is the same as the first switch. The basic setting here has been set up, and you can see the node role here is ring nodes as the default setting. So, we set the status to enable. Then click submit. After finish set all of the ERPS setting from two devices, now let's connect the cable. Remember, at the ARPS configuration for both switches, the ring port 0 and ring port 1 default setting are port 1 and port 2. So now we connect port 1 from the first switch to port 2 from the second switch, and port 1 from the second switch to port 2 from the first switch. After we connect the cable, we can see at the panel here, the ring LED is changed to green now, which means the ring is activated. In the ARPS setting, it must have one blocking port in RPL owner. So let's go to the first switch web management in ERPS status. You're gonna see here that it has one blocking port in ring port 1 to prevent looping. And when I disconnect the cable to create a ring value, the ring LED will change to orange to mention that the ring status is abnormal. In this condition, you can also check the ERPS status. In ring failure condition, 
the ring will block the port that sends the fail signal. In this condition, ring port 0 is blocked. In this ring failure condition, you will see that the node state here is protection status. And right now, let's just try to fix the connection. Then refresh the ERPS status page. You will see here that the blocking port is open right now and the node state status changed to pending. And let's see the RPL owner status. The RPL owner will send the wait to recovery timer signal. When the recovery timer changes to zero or expire, the node state from RPL owner will change to idle, which means that the connection is working normally.